What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Farchy's Farch Monster Cinema. And as you can tell, I got kicked out of the Myers Cave again. So I got another episode of Kicking It on the Couch. And it's going to start right now. Uh, welcome back to the channel, like I said. I appreciate it. Um, more of a relaxed environment and anything can happen again because there's my cat again um, on today's review I am reviewing from 1979 I am doing tourist trap I've always heard a bunch of people and especially Lee McCoy always talk about tourist trap how it's a PG movie but it's freaking a badass little horror movie and I had a really good time with it, even though it's it's obviously dated, but it was a good ass movie. I had a really good time with it. It was super fun. And I really wasn't I was actually really surprised that I had that great of a time with it. Um it stars Chuck Connors, uh, Tanya Roberts, and Jocelyn Jones. Um so the premise of this movie it follows a group of young people. Um they stumble across a roadside museum run by a guy with telekinetic powers. I know what you're thinking. Wow, that sounds kind of lame. And obviously going into it, I was... Eh, I didn't know what to think about it either, but I really had a good time with it. Uh, so they're driving, the car breaks down. Um, they gotta get, The one guy goes off to find a gas station. Um, he gets trapped in this room and shit just starts flying out of the cupboards and shit. It's all shaking around. The windows are going up and down and whatnot. Um, so you have no idea what the hell is going on. Um, he gets hit hit in the back with like this pipe that impales him, and then his blood starts to pour out of the pipe like it's getting sucked out of a straw. I thought that was pretty unique, um, especially and being PG, I didn't think you would actually see. You know, the impalement or the actual blood coming out of the victim, which you did. So I thought that was pretty badass. Um, that was a pretty cool, interesting way to, you know, start the first kill of the movie. Um, the the name of the museum that they stumble upon is called Slauson's Lost Oasis. Um, it's There was a sign that said close to the public, but you know how these movies go. Kids don't give a shit what kind of sign you got out there because kids are going to do what they want to do and they go investigate and go check this out anyway and um, they actually run into Mr. Slauson while they're there and they explain to they were swimming in like this quarry or whatever and they explain uh, that the jeep broke down so uh, he goes with he goes with the Jerry uh, back to town to try and get the jeep fixed um we don't know if he's really. We he don't, don't know if he was really doing that, going to help him, or he had some other sinister plans. Because we just met this guy. He seems like a nice guy, but then again, he seems kind of off. So we don't know how to interpret him at all. Um, but I guess we're gonna find out. Um, throughout this movie, I was definitely getting. Obviously, this is way before, but I was. I could see kind of a uh, House of Wax from 2005 getting a lot of its. Uh, getting its, a lot of its inspiration from this film. I saw kind of a lot of similarities that, that in the 2005 film that resemble this one. And I don't see nothing wrong with it. I think this was a good movie to borrow some stuff from and try to make it your own. But I would definitely say that 2005's House of Wax is kind of like a tourist trap remake as sorts, minus obviously the telekinetic powers. Uh, that, I don't think that would work today. It's kind of kind of corny and uh, I don't know it just does, it doesn't work for me personally the telekinetic stuff but it back in 1979 it's perfect because that's what you want back in the day um, the one girl Eileen she goes to investigate the house uh, obviously she was advised not to there's a house close to the uh, oasis obviously she doesn't give a shit like I said before kids don't care what you gotta say um so she goes to investigate freaking mannequins and shit 
creepy. Always find mannequins to be so damn creepy. Their eyeballs are moving and shit. Um, the white mask, the costume in this, creepy ass shit. The white mask with like the hair and like the red ascot. It, it got like a Texas chainsaw vibe, but then total, but different. If that makes any sense. When you first see it, like, damn, it kind of looks like Leatherface Texas Chainsaw Mask, but it's a lot cleaner. More mannequin y, obviously, because that's what he's trying to blend in with his mannequins and whatnot, so it makes sense. Relating back to the 2005 House of Wax, how um, the one killer has the mask on, kind of very similar, so I can see where they got that from. Um, and another thing, Mr. Slauson has a brother, he's not all there. House of Wax, there's two brothers, there's three brothers really, but two main brothers, so, kind of similar, very similar. Um, another girl there, Becky, she goes to look for Eileen, uh, in the mannequin room, creepy music, um, man, weird scene, dude, weird, the mannequin, like, they like fall, and then they're like, she falls, and then they're like dancing over her. So freaking weird because he's using his telekinetic powers to freaking move anything that he wants, and that was a really creepy scene because mannequins in general, to me, are very creepy. They were creepy in Maniac from 1980. They were shit, creepy in Halloween 2018. Obviously, you know they didn't come to life or move or anything in that movie, but they were still creepy. Um, there's just something about mannequins, and we probably should see some more of these. A whole mannequin movie. Mannequins waking up and going around killing people. Sounds like a fire idea. Let's make it happen. Let's do it. No, but seriously. So damn creepy. The music they play in this movie. The killer's mask. The appearance of the killer. The mannequins. It works. So we established that Mr. Slauson's brother is the one doing it. Wink, wink. Oh man, the one he, we find out that he plasters his victims alive. He pours the plastic over their eyes and their mouth and then how oh, he's freaking covers the eyes as he's talking to this girl. And then the last thing he covers is her nose so she'll stop breathing and then her heart. He's talking about how she'll suffocate and her heart will explode. What a way to go. Like, obviously, you know, see any blood or anything but just the thing being your face covered with plaster the suffocation until your heart can't take it anymore and it blows up and he's having enjoyment enjoyment from all of this how sick is that um Mr. Slauson then goes on to explain to Molly that his brother's not all there he had to take care of him blah 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 when we find out that Mr. Slauson was the killer all along. He made up the story. He's the one with the telekinetic powers that nobody understood. And explaining that his brother always wanted to be him. But he was both of them at the same time. You know what I mean? The freaking killer. They get a guy and they shoot. They hit him in the face. And the only part I was confused about is his mask was like made of porcelain. Yet it was like fully functioning. Like when he talked, like the mouth moved. I don't see how that would be possible to have a porcelain mask in the face move at the same time. Porcelain's not a very flexible material, so that really didn't make any sense. But the mask cracks and then it falls off and then we get to see that it was no other than Mr. Slauson. It was incredible. Um, another thing in this movie, Becky, this weird freaking Indian thing, like mannequin thing. Throws a tomahawk and hits her in the back of the head. These are pretty cool kills for being PG, I ain't gonna lie. Never seen a PG slasher in my life until we've seen this one. Um, so we, we learned to find out that Mr. Slauson killed his brother. He did have a brother. He killed his brother and his wife because his brother was cheating on him. Cheating. <laughs> his wife was cheating 
on him with his brother. And now some days of our life shit right there. Next time on the Taurus Trap. Cheating. Gone wrong. Cheated on him. So he killed them. He killed them both. So like I said, Molly Molly was the only one left. And she she has to fight back. And as a final girl, she does. She hits Mr. Slauson with an axe. And, yeah, she leaves in a jeep with the mannequins. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. These mannequins will haunt your dreams forever. But, I thought it was a damn entertaining movie. Um, Mr. Slauson was a very interesting killer. With very interesting telekinetic powers that are not common in these movies. But the characters were fun, the premise was fun. Um, like I said, the mask and the outfit of the killer was creepy. The fact that he could move stuff with his mind and kill you and not even be there is creepy. Mannequins. Creepy. If you have not seen this movie, obviously I probably spoiled it for you. But check it out. I mean, it's from 1979, so I really... This goes without question. This would be a spoiler review. Um... But damn, it was it was fun. Uh, I definitely would watch it again. I got it for like eight bucks on uh, from Full Moon. Uh, they're the people that brought you like Puppet Master. Um, so eight bucks, you can't beat it. If you go on their website, they have one for twenty. I think it comes with like a VHS tape and the Blu-ray. So for you VHS collectors, I would definitely go check that out. Um, I was gonna do it, but I don't got no VCR. Um, once again, another episode of Kicking It on the Couch. On this very comfortable sofa. Oh, and by the way, just picked up this picked up this new shirt the other day. Nice little black Christmas shirt. Had to get one. It's me, Billy, come out in May, so felt no better time than to get this beautiful shirt right here from the 1974 classic. So if you want one, it was only like 19 bucks. Very beautiful shirt. Got it on eBay of all places. But yeah, that was about another episode of Kicking It on the Couch with Taurus Trap from 1979. Um, hopefully you liked the video. Definitely hit the like button for me. It really helps. I really appreciate it. Helping to grow this channel. I appreciate every subscriber that I get. I interact with as many of you guys as I can. So, if you're feeling extra froggy, leave a message down below. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about Taurus Trap. If you had a good time with it, and I must hurry now.